Hey guys, how's it going? Nick here. Um, today I'm going to be showing you uh, a little bit about PixInsight and give an intro to kind of my workflow and how I work through PixInsight. Uh, I guess the best way to start this off would be first we're going to open PixInsight itself. Um, I have tried Photoshop, uh, Astro Pixel Processor, and PixInsight, and personally, this is the best program I believe. Um, it seems to offer the most powerful. Um, tools that you can use to edit your Astro software, I mean to edit your Astro pictures, um, and I think it's probably the best looking software um, that's available currently. I am using the newest version, as you can see there is a update right here behind my face, um, <laughs> but other than that we are using the probably the most current version we could. Um, so just to start off, I'm just going to kind of give a tour of what I know about PixInsight. I'm not a professional. I've only been using it for about six months. Um, but yeah, let me just go over a few things. Um, so the different tools I use, I kind of just run right off the um, all processes screen. I don't really have a specific set of tools that I use on the side of the screen. I kind of just memorize my workflow. Um, sorry about that. Um, I will pull this up to show you real quick. My workflow. Um, this is the workflow that I follow. Throughout this series I'll be going through kind of how I work through this um, on a particular image that I got off the um, PixInsight for a beginners group. Um, and I'll just work through and show you how it works. So if you want to pause the video and take this or write this down, I'll also probably have it posted down below in my description box. Um, to kind of show off how it works and what each of these mean because a lot of these letters um, stand for specific processes and uh, they're not <laughs> they're not always the most friendly for um, new beginners that you know don't know what CC or BGN means. Um, the other thing I want to show off real quick that I also use is I use two different sets of scripts. Um, they make PI a lot more uh, user friendly and they're very easy to work with. Um, the first one and the absolute best one I've found is the Easy Processing Suite. Um, a user on the PixInsight Facebook page, actually Andy Robertson, shout out to him, he showed me the complete Easy Suite. Um, and as you can see, they do have a nice little pack here that it comes with. They're completely free. Um, there's a repository online. You can find it on the PixInsight forums or on uh, Cloudy Nights, I believe, as well. Um, there's a couple different forums that the creator um, has on there. So we have Easy Deconvolution, Easy Denoise, Easy HDR, Easy Live Stack, Soft Stretch, and Star Reduction. Um, I use everything except the Deconvolution. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a pro, so I don't actually use that currently, but uh, possibly in the future. Um, and then the other uh, script that I use is the um, SHO AIP, oh, can't run that yet the SHO AIP um, image integration script. Um, this works really well for SHO integration. You can also use pixel math um, and LRGB combination. There's a bunch of different ways to get done what I done, get done what I get done with that program. Um, but personally I find that the SHO script works really well and I don't have to learn a bunch of different things. And it removes pink halos, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so I think to start off, I will just show you kind of, you know, what I go through, and we will go through a few steps, and uh, yeah, I'll show off some of the easy script as well. So right away, I open my copies. Now you might see I have a bunch of different, um, bunch of different folders here. These are past works that I have, um, but the three that we'll be working with today, there might, there's a quick preview of what we're going to be getting. It's the, uh, um, it's a Southern Hemisphere target. I won't spoil yet what it is. Um, so I just open all three of my files. Now, like I said, these are from the Pix Insight um, February monthly challenges. Um, so these are already stacked. I do my stacking actually in Deep Sky Stacker. I don't use Pix Insight. It doesn't seem to work as well for me, um, so I just stay away from it. Um, right off the bat, you might notice that all these images are completely black. That is because they're not stretched. So you can do an auto stretch on each image by clicking on the image, when it's blue, that means you're in the correct box for like the current image. And I hit Control A, and there you go. 
you see your image. And this is a kind of like a pre-stretch. It is a stretch, but if you hit F12, it will revert to the previous um, to the previous kind of black screen unstretched image. So this is an auto stretch, like a preview, so to speak. Um, and if we do that on all three of our photos, you can see the data that we have here. So we have our SI stack, we have our HA stack, and we have our OII stack. Um, we can kind of minimize those and just work with one at a time. So the HA stack, um, the first thing that I usually do after I stack my images is I do a process called star alignment, which is processes, all processes, star alignment. Um, what star alignment does is it actually takes all three channels and it will align the stars so that you don't have color artifacts and halos of other colors behind a certain star. Um, this can be from you know the way that the camera takes a picture, um, different nights. You could have the camera rotate a little bit if you move your setup. Um, some people don't need to use this as much depending on your setup, but uh, my setup goes in and out every night, so I have to do this. Um, I switch this to file. I go down, I look for my reference image. So in this case, it would be the HA stack. Um, I personally choose to use the hydrogen alpha stack or my luminance stack as my reference image. You can use whichever one you want. I usually pick the one that's best. That seems to work really well for me. From there, I leave everything pre-selected. Um, one of the perks of PixInsight is that a lot of the defaults work really, really well. You don't need to change a ton of stuff. Um, if you do find something you want to change, it's usually because you're getting a little more advanced. Um, but right off the bat, I keep a lot of the default stuff default. So then you want to add your files. So I re-add the hydrogen stack, oxygen, and sulfur. I have all three of those here, as you can see, HA, OII, and SII, or OIII, and SII. So once they're all there, they will all be checked. And the last thing I change is I hit this little folder here, and you choose a directory. So this is my stack photo directory. Select that folder, and then it will go in here. You can change your prefix, postfix, mask, dmap. Um, you can change a whole bunch of different things down here. And then I just hit this little circle, and that will apply it, and it will run, and that will stack the images. And then you'll get them like this. So I think for this video, the last step we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I uh, get the images kind of prepped and cropped. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is if I do know the orientation of the image, I hit fast rotation. And you have a few options here. You have rotate 180, 90 clockwise, counterclockwise, and two mirror options. I usually keep it on 180 um, or 90, depending on what you need. And from there, you're going to hit the square button, or if you want, you can drag the triangle, and that will rotate the image. And now you can see that this image is in a better orientation than it was. So I'm going to do this. And I usually hit the square because it will apply it to the live image. So the blue, um, kind of like an active window in Windows or Mac, whatever active window you're in is the one that you're working in. So just hit the square, and that will rotate your image. Same thing with the SII, my third rotation. And as you can see, this has these weird um, kind of darker and grayer areas, that is the different stacked layers. So that's going to line up real nicely with the SII and the HA. That will line up nicely. So what you want to do is I go to Process, Geometry, and I do a Dynamic Crop. So we'll make sure we're on this HA window. And actually, let's do a different one. We're going to go with the SII. So this is the most, I usually go in the most aggressive kind of angled one and work off that because you'd have to go back and do it anyway. So right away I hit the reset button that will reset our dynamic crop window that you can see is the outline on the image um, that's kind of like the grayed out area and I just go in until I see an area where all the boxes seem to intersect so if you look here that obviously the dark area isn't correct this kind of lighter uh, this kind of darker gray area, that's not the current image. The median image is the kind of grayish image in the middle. And I just go through, and I'll grab as much as I can. Now, like I said, this probably was a user that did it over way different nights. 
Um, I don't take my camera off too much, so my tilt is not this aggressive. I don't have to crop this much off normally. This is a pretty large image, so we're okay doing that. Um, and what I do personally is I will take off of this image, I will take the little carrot, and I will drag it onto my HA stack, and you'll see automatically it will crop it. And then I'll take it, and I'll drag it on my oxygen stack. And then from here, you don't need to do anything except just hit the green check mark, and it will automatically bring up the original and crop that. So now we have three identically cropped images, and see if you can kind of see it through there. You can see they line up, and the hydrogen lines up nicely. Now this one, I still have a little bit of an issue with the corner there, so we're just going to go back in here and just kind of pull that down and pull that in a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to take that and drag that onto each of these guys. Same thing, hit the green check, and there we go. Now we have three star lined, cropped, and uh, perfectly centered images. So now we're ready for stacking.